The world isn't just made up of good people and bad people. It's a lot more complicated than that. Men like me spend a lot of time climbing the ladder, trying to be the one on top. Most have to be in my situation to realize that the ladder is rather horizontal. You need some rest. I will have my rest. Do you remember, Randy, when I told you that if I had a son, I wouldn't love him the way I love you? This is why, Randy, I'm giving you everything I'm leaving behind. All my wealth. Three million dollars to a good man like you. Time for my rest. a war veteran, humanitarian, and philanthropist John Hardy has died in his home last night after a five-year battle with cancer. Hardy leaves behind an immense fortune acquired from decades of local investments of philanthropist and humanitarian activities. Everyone, I present to you Randy Love, John Hardy's bodyguard. Mr. Love, good morning. Can you pass me those documents, please? How you doing? I'm fine, thank you very much. Just uh, give me a minute here. Wait, what's he doing here? Miles, we needed recommendations from all your former employers to approve Hardy's proposal. Miles really put in a good word for you, more than anybody else. You flew all the way here for the funeral. Everything's okay, right? Well, everything is fine, uh, besides the death of Mr. Hardy, of course. Uh, we're all saddened by the death of a prominent man, a natural death, I might add, which is why we'd like to thank you for these five years of protective service. It was nothing. Nothing really happened. Unless you want to count the time we were working out, you tried to bench press with me. 
torn pec, injured wrist. Ouch. Yeah, other than that, no action. Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. You know why you're here. We understand that John intended to secure your name as the beneficiary. He sent his request in earlier. Look, um... Um, what? When do I, you know... When do I get the money? <laughs> <laughs> You're a good man, Mr. Love. We could understand why Mr. Hardy would want to put three million dollars in your hands. However, it's not exactly what you think it is. Things aren't always as they seem. Well, when do I get the money? Randy, you were like a son to John. He took you under his wing, and you were hugely inspirational to his writing. You're probably some kind of guru yourself. Your value to him is much appreciated. Look, I don't mean to be impatient, but I think I deserve to know what's going on here. Like, now. John Hardy's final request when he last consulted us was to assign you as the... Oh, what's that? Contingent owner. Right. Contingent owner and beneficiary of three life insurance policies. Of his children. Children? He had kids? How come no one ever told me he had kids? There are a few things about Mr. Hardy that are confidential. In light of the current circumstances, it's now appropriate for more vital information to be brought to your attention. So, what? Look, I don't understand. What happens to the will? No money? Well, you know what? I'm sorry to disappoint you. It's rather a life insurance policy that Hardy laid on our table worth $3 million. It is not a will. Listen, Randy, uh, there are some other ways we could try to help you out, but... Uh... So no money? N no money. No money. Nope. However, you do still have a guaranteed job as a bodyguard if you transfer your services to Hardy's three children. I think John would really like that. What do you say? It's your call. Other than that, you're dismissed. Pass me the next one, please. Thank you. Said you may leave now. Bye.
I don't know. Give me, give me thirty minutes. You got fifteen. Get in the car. So Randy, so how's my auntie doing? Fine. Surgery was a success. Doc says he needs to go back in though. She needs more money. She's gotta be tolerant about the situation. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, poor you, man. You're always in bad luck. You know, people like you don't deserve mess ups like this, you know what I mean? It's unfortunate. Yo, Johnny, remember this guy? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, Randy Love, the bodyguard. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's your colleague. Yep. Just pay this guy a lousy 40 grand a year, and you're straight. He's gonna protect you no matter what. Yeah, Randy? You know, You've been working for wealthy people for a very long time now, Randy. Have you, uh, have you ever thought about getting paid for a change? How about you becoming wealthy? Have you ever thought about that? If you become rich and then you can talk about my auntie with a big smile on your face, how's that? You know, pay your mother's medical bills, tuition for your nieces and nephews, you know? You could donate a lot of money for the orphanage you grew up in. In fact, get everybody a plane ticket, let them all fly over here, you know what I'm saying? I'm serious, like, these are some pretty good intentions you got there. But it's that lousy $3 million that's gonna solve all your problems, wouldn't it? And let me tell you something. That tolerant attitude of yours is not gonna get you anywhere, let me tell you that. Look, the dead man's money is gonna go to his legitimate children. It's a lot, that's fine with me. He had three sons, Renny. He had three children. They never gave up crap about the old man, but yet they're getting all his money. All of it. And that's what I want to talk to you about. I did a little research about this life insurance policy thingy. It's pretty interesting, let me tell you that. You want to hear it? Okay, I'll tell you anyways. Three million dollars. If something happens to one of the sons, if one of them dies, let's say, supposing they have an accident and then they pass on or something like that, automatically you become one million dollars richer. Stop the car. It's an impressive resume you got there, Mr. Love. You must have taken a lot of dedication and time to get all this weapons training, huh? Eh? I said stop the car! I guess some people don't really change their minds. Oh yeah, by the way, go to hell.
So what's in it for you? You know, I'm a lawyer, entrepreneur, among other things, yeah. I'll be keeping you clean. Just the usual 20%, that's all I ask. All right, lay it on me, man. Three sons, three different businesses. The old man manufactured them in his previous life. That's why you never heard of them. According to these insurance papers here, you'd be awarded a million dollars if something happens to one of them and he dies. Why wait? I say you kill him. Kill them all. And like I said, I'm gonna use all my resources and all my tentacles to make sure you keep away from trouble. And for all my help, I take 20% of all your funds. Are we cool? Yeah, man. Whatever. Now, 30 years ago, Hardy began this strange ritual. See what he would do? He would find the most sickest, most deranged female criminal in the world, no matter how ugly she looked too. And he would rape her, get her pregnant, to produce his child. Why? He wanted the best genes to carry on his criminal work. And trust me, they did just that. So the sons were named after the three biggest natural disasters. Volcano, earthquake, and hurricane. The youngest son, Volcano. Now he's a rapper, and trust me, this guy's slick. He's a pimp, but there hasn't been enough evidence proving that he or his manager is responsible. But trust me, I know. As soon as he released his first album, there's been about 12 prostitution arrests, and about nine out of 12 skanks came from his music videos. And trust me, they don't come cheap. Now, his twin brother, Earthquake, 26 years old, street entrepreneur, probably the most dangerous. He opened his own toy manufacturing distribution company. Now, he sells his merchandise to grown men in the streets, wraps them up like birthday presents. But we all know he's selling guns, right? His constant trouble with the law, it always makes for good television, if you ask me. Now, the elder son, Hurricane, 29 years old, and he's the richest. Now with him, you simply do not want to mess with Hurricane. You ever heard of the Crave Sugar and Vegetable Company? See, he bought it when I was 19, and he runs it now. You see, the company is non-government related. It's in the private sector. So long story short, this guy imports, sells, and controls all the sugar and vegetable supplies in the city. Make sense? You don't talk much, do you? Yo, what's up, what's poppin'? It's your boy C Nash, aka the Shiny Magnifier. We in the studio with my man Volcano who's about hey, to hold on, hold on, hold on. You know what, man? Before we can get into that, I wanna give a quick shout out to my boy Earthquake holding it down. You know what it is, eh? Snitch hustling like a broke ass prostitute on the corner of Holando. How at your boy? My bad, keep going, man. How about you, boy? All right, so V, man, your last album went gold. You want to let the fans know when your new joint's going to drop? Before we get into that, I want to say something real quick. Because somebody got to tell my twin brother, it's game over. You hear that earthquake? It's done. I got the girls. I got the money. I got the ice. And if it wasn't for that pretty face mama gave you, I swear to God, I would have knocked the snitch out of you. I run this city. <laughs> I got nookie in my flow, dog. This ain't a game, I fly like a plane. I got more ice than a snow, dog. I'm more hot than your mama's kitchen. I pop them haters at night, make them scream and shiver like a chicken. Flew out a jet in the middle of the sky. Took off my parachute because I'm too fly. I came here with my bulletproof vest. 
Nah, I take it off because I got a hard check I grab the mic, I spit and boil it You only drop a bomb when you hit in the toilet Turn your rice to a hoe, don't care about the halo Lava is my saliva, they call me Volcano That was bad. You made me miss my shot. How you doing? Are you here to see Volcano? Out. The video shoot is over and there's no more autographs. <laughs> autographs? You hear this guy? Look man, what's your name? My name is Paul. Look Paul, why don't you let Mr. Sex Me Street here know that one of his most trusted customers has arrived. Just give him my business card, all right? I need to go through his new uh, catalog. Now, you know we uh, require a security check, right? And uh, if you guys are cops, you're gonna die. <laughs> so you got the do-rag over there? I know he's got a Jerry curl underneath. It looks too familiar. Damn, B. I think that's your lawyer. I'm out of town. How many hookers do you need? No, that is none of your business. Oh, yeah, and um, while you're at it, let him know that his new bodyguard has arrived. What? You're fired, that's what. What the hell's wrong with this guy, man? None of that stuff. You yeah, see that? It's your boy right there. Yeah, see him? You see him? Doesn't look anything like Hardy. He's black. Half, okay? What was this guy doing here? He says he's here with your new bodyguard. His mother was black. You know who his mother is? His mother's Anna James. Let me give you a little history lesson here. Now, think about his mother as no, she was. Let's just say she was the gold medalist of the National Hall Olympics in Haiti. Olympics? Hard. Hard Olympics. She's a hooker prostitute. No. Shh. She murdered 11 other clients. Six of them are politicians. Now, she made a fortune by becoming a hitman and a prostitute at the same time. She was a queen of sex and violence. The Hardy, he got lucky when she gave birth to twins after he raped her. Because what he did is, he separated the two kids to represent both sides of her character, sex and violence. He's the sex, and uh, his brother Earthquake represents the violence, but that's not his story. Shut up, man. Do you expect me to believe all this bull you've been telling me all week? Since the bodyguard can stay, but he has to stand from a distance. And you're going to get the other catalog in the mail. Ah, uh, thank you very much, Paul. You're very kind. I appreciate that. Peace. Bye. You're fired. I don't want to see you again. Look, if you want to do this, you got to do this tonight. It's the best opportunity, OK? Look at him. He's drunk. He's weak. What's wrong with you? You've done this before, right? Okay, look, it's gonna be easy. Why? Because it's not like he's the normal person in the first place. Is he gonna do it? No, I'm not gonna do it. What? What are you talking about? Get out, Lance. What? Get out, get out. So, 
Prostitution in disguise, huh? Hell yeah! <laughs> yeah. Your father would be really ashamed of you. Tell me what do you know about my father, huh? You can't talk? Right. Maybe we should invite that lawyer dude to join the party then. <laughs> oh, you talking about Jay Curl? <laughs> <laughs> since the death of John Hardy. A tragedy has once again hit the Hardy family and the local music industry. Rapper and fashion model Victor Volcano Hardy, the youngest son of recently deceased John Hardy, was brutally stabbed to death after a brawl at a local bar. The murder occurred in the early AM a few hours after a video shoot for his upcoming single, My Balls to the Wall. Police investigators are speculating that two individuals may have been involved in the bar fight. 
So what are we on this guy for? Trust me, he was there last night. You know the rap industry. Manager's always the rapper's best friend and partner in crime. I hear that. You think he's pimping on the side? I know so. Don't forget to knock. Can you? Shortly after a police visit at the scene, an arrest warrant was released for Hardy's manager, producer, and best friend, Enrico Martinez. Chief Police Inspector Officer George Wintley tells the ONC Press, and I quote, As the investigation of this murder began, final pieces of evidence were found that indicate that Victor Volcano Hardy and affiliates have been partaking in illegal sex trafficking activities. Name? What, you cops don't read your files anymore? <sighs> Listen, I'm, I'm Detective Mason. You can call me Detective Mason. I'm gonna be frank with you. Enrico Ramirez, your world is just as screwed up as mine. Yeah, I hear the stories about the cops going out to the bars and the strip clubs hooking up with the underage girls that look like rejects from rap videos, you know, $300 later, they get what they want. You know what the funny part is? Is that the shift sergeant hooked them up with that. What a world, right? What a world. About eight out of 10 cops in this building couldn't give a crap about the job. But guess what? I'm partners with George Wintley. You know who he is, right? Real police. So what are you gonna do about it? Lock me up? Whoever killed Victor Volcano Hardy is gonna go down for murder. Believe that. But not without having a conversation with George Wintley first. So do yourself a favor. Tell us who did it. If you do that, I'll be sure to shave off some years. All right? You. Yes, me. You gonna get me out? Why? Well, because of my concern as a good citizen, the volcano murder case is officially closed, as if it never happened. Thanks to me. So it is true what they say about you, huh? Bend the law in any shape you want. Make anybody get away with anything. You know, Enrico, if I were you, I would just shut my mouth. If you tell anybody about what happened last night, you might end up like a friend. So just shut up. This is what you need to know. There's a deadly game of Monopoly going on in the city, and you are right at the bottom of it. I'll give you 24 hours to decide which side are you gonna be on. of the murder are still ongoing, more details will be revealed as soon as we get updates. Victor Hardy is survived by two siblings, his older half-brother Horace Hurricane Hardy and his twin brother Eric Earthquake Hardy, who have both yet to release a statement of sorts to the public. ...overnight between rival factions along the Israeli-Syrian border. Initial reports claim Israeli jet fighters bombed a guerrilla base, killing at least 49... It's on the news right now. Volcano. My brother's dead. What happened? That's what I'm gonna find out within a week. Well, if you ask me, I'd say the prime suspect should be you. How dare you? I mean, how dare you joke about something like this? My brother's dead. You get it? Dead. Now you listen, now you listen. Good. If you ever joke about something like this, I swear to God, I'll make sure that you never walk again. You hear me? You hear now, how am I supposed to know it's not one of your people doing this, huh? So tell me how am I supposed to know? <laughs> now, why would I do such a thing, brother? I don't know. Probably the same reason why you think I would do it. <laughs> now, let's not get into this right now, shall we? And pay our respects. Precisely. You coming down? Soon. Are we cool? We're cool. For now. <laughs> For now. This is one dysfunctional family we got there. Yep, only tragedies and losses brings us together, nothing else. 
Eric, this is Mitch. He's the head of my security. Who's this good looking, handsome fellow? That's Enrico. He was Victor's manager. So, where were you when he got killed then? Is there something you'd like to share with us? Yeah, this. When is our appointment, Eric? 30 minutes. Officer Whitley's gonna be there. The subject was pronounced dead on the scene. No heartbeat, no pulse. The body had already begun to show a slow process of deterioration. There was no attempt to try and revive the body. It was too late for that. It appeared Victor had already been dead for a few hours before the phone call was made. Well, there were some amounts of alcohol in his system. You boys better take note of that. This is where he's being kept. The autopsy will begin in about an hour or so. Whoever did this to you, I'm going to find him. And I'm going to make you meet him again. Hey, hey, just be careful what you say right next to a cop, my friend. If there's any sort of murder occurring in the next week or so, we're coming straight for you. You understand me? I'm going to make him pay. It's sad. Looks like those bunnies will have to find legitimate jobs now. What do you know about legitimate jobs? Wait a second. Can I say something? Now, I don't know what it is with you Hardy boys, but I'd like to know how in the world y'all managed to dodge the law your entire lives. Seriously, don't you get it? With your father being dead now, new doors have been opened. No subliminal rules, no sympathy. Now the law is not some sort of weak wall where y'all think you can just slide through its cracks. Now, anything can happen. This city, this country owes your father a great debt for all the charity works he's done the past five years. But you guys, on the other hand, I swear on my triple-double morning coffee with raspberry donuts that I am going to be on your asses, desperate, like a cancerous virgin old man on Viagra, swimming in a pool full of fresh, blonde, silicone pump playboy bunnies at his birthday party. Officer Wentley, we're not interested in your post-retirement sex life. Well. Looks like mommy wasn't around to change the diapers, so daddy didn't want to spank a dirty ass, huh? And what's with that grin on your face? It's been there approximately nine hours a day since it was born. In fact, most people have seen his face without the grin, couldn't tell you what it looked like. Oh yeah? Why not? This is not a gym class locker room, gentlemen. If you want to have an immature discussion, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Have you seen enough? I'm out of here. I swear to you, I'm gonna make him pay. We'll be watching. You hear me? All right, one down, one more to go. Conscience, Miles. Maybe you need one. If you're sorry for your sins, you may have a chance with God. You just made a million dollars. 
the money should be transferred to your account in about a week. No, I can tell you needed me for this to happen. I sense a little bit of uh, uneasiness in you. How do you feel? I didn't mean to kill that kid, Miles. It was an accident. I'd kill a drug dealer in a second. But the son of my mentor? No, nah, man. No. Nah. I understand. No one says it's supposed to be easy, but it's worth it. His brother should be coming to town. Now, some of our people surveillance. We have about 48 hours before we could do anything. I want out, Miles. I don't trust you. I don't know exactly what you're doing, but whatever it is, count me out. Well, there's no way out now, Randy. There's no way out. Well, there's no way out. You know, let me ask you something. See, now you're trying to tell me that even you, you looked into the old man's dying eyes right before he died. You're trying to tell me that even you can figure it out? Randy, the old man knew what he signed. He wanted you to have that money. He didn't put the kids' lives in your hands. He put the deaths in your hands. Now why would he do something like that? Why? Think. Think hard. Well, it looks like somebody doesn't know what he wants. What's the story with you and him? It's beyond business, isn't it? Look, Johnny, I'm not, I'm not the most trustworthy person in the world. So I don't blame him for thinking that way. See, this is what it is. He saved my life in a situation he wasn't supposed to, like years ago. Half of him is proud of his integrity towards me. The other half, not so much. It's not business or personal. It's something else. Hmm. It's the first time I noticed that. What is it? Love, read it backwards. People say I talk too much, what do you say? Oh, you know. Ah, 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 ah. Now what did I tell you the last time? You pay me to I shut up. I pay you to shut up, exactly. Now, that's the story of my life, man. You know why I became a lawyer? Why? I'll tell you why. See, ever since I was a little kid, I had this thing where I just look people in the eye, and I just hypnotize them. And at the end of the day, if something goes wrong, I don't get blamed for it. The city's corrupt, and I'm the corrupter. I run the city. Randy Love? Officer George Wentley, you mind if I come in and ask you a few questions? Citizen George, if you don't want to retire, don't retire. Just don't say your lines for the sake of it. Dude, you got any beer? I don't drink, remember? You don't? George, have a good night. I'm going to sleep. What have you been doing with yourself lately? Nothing. Who are you working for? His dad, remember? How'd you let that happen? He got old. Stop kidding around. I'm talking about Victor, his son, not John Hardy. I don't work for the sons. I don't protect the sons. That's not what I came here for. I mean, why would you want to protect them? What, you think I'm some kind of corrupt cop or something? Well, if I had a few bottles of whiskey with me, I wouldn't need to answer that, would I? <laughs> you know, I like you. You're funny. <laughs> what have you been doing with yourself, Randy? Things are pretty bad right now. How about you do the same gig you did back in Boston? How about you join our police force? I can get you in, and no, it ain't SWAT, but it's pretty noble. What do you want me to do, George?
somewhere, man. I have more blood spill on my hands. I can't do that anymore. Randy, I'm not saying that your life is a mistake, but I remember the days when your mother used to smile a lot more. And if you don't understand how crime can profoundly decay our society, then maybe you do need to be raped by a criminal like your mother was. For the five plus years, Eric Hardy, excuse me, the Earthquake Toys Delivery Company have been operating. Police have been bombarded by reports of gun trafficking, indicating the sales agents are in fact selling authentic firearms to their customers. Eric Hardy and a number of his known affiliates were arrested eight months ago near his home in this very neighborhood. This is not real, man. I saw some guy, yo, this is happening in this corner right here. I saw some guy, he had a big cheesy gift box and everything, and one of my boys jumped him, and it's just so he stole it to see what's inside. He had some AKs, M16, 007s, Uzis, so they were selling this thing everywhere. They were just turning the place. This is uh, an unfortunate issue that occurred repeatedly over the past two years. Various parties have tried again and again to fabricate false accusations regarding the legit oh, legitimacy of my client's business. I, along with my client, would like to apologize to the general public and to his customers for apologize. any doubts or uncertainties that may have been generated as a result of this court case. Look, he sells toys. Let the kid do his thing. Toy. Get a life. For the kid. I'm innocent. <laughs> Let's go. Get out of here. Woo! suspicious hooligans that used to compete with me. You know, rumor has it that uh, my brother Hurricane's their biggest shareholder. Il y a longtemps, là. I want you out of my city, Ron. And this time, don't come back here. We're on vacation. Vacation? You killed my brother? What makes me a suspect, eh? Ron, anyone who works for Hurricane is a suspect, especially if he lives a thousand kilometers away and he gets all of his correspondents to do his dirty work for him. It's nothing complicated, really. It's business. I totally understand. Fils de chien. <laughs> Give me the stuff. Listen, E, I mean, Volcano didn't even know these guys. You know, I don't, I don't think it's a good idea. We should just, you know, we should just bounce mask out of here. Come on. My father once told me that curiosity may have killed the cat, but if it was seeking very vital information in conjunction with the fact that it had nine lives, then maybe it's worth it. What are you talking about, man? My brother's killer may or may not be in this place. 
but I'm gonna buy my information one bullet at a time. In this world, you're only gonna find two kinds of people. Those who try to play God, and those who try to play Satan. Makes no difference to me. This is what you're gonna do, Johnny. You're gonna pick him up tomorrow morning, call it to six. Before he gets to read the newspaper. Doesn't need to know that a body's been taken away from the morgue. He's gonna change his mind. He's gonna go home and think about it. Fourth of July came early last night. The boy earthquake ignited some serious fireworks. Naughty, naughty. Well, get all your men off the radar. I want to follow them myself. I'll see what I can find. <laughs> no problem. Sorry, gentlemen, for keeping you waiting. That was my other line. That was Mel, wasn't it? Yeah. How do you know? Just a wild guess. By the way, how you guys doing? Yeah, we're good. We're good. Like, you know we're engaged, right? The wedding's in four months. Congratulations. Thank you very much. You know, you still haven't told me the reason why you want to do this. I mean, you did say the first murder was an accident and that uh, you didn't trust me. What made you change your mind all of a sudden? You know, it's not your damn business. I got my own reasons for taking part in this. People like you aren't intelligent enough to understand. Hmm, I see. Fair enough. Target is on site. He's on the move. All right, gentlemen, stand by. Showtime. Good morning, Earthquake. Or should I call you Eric? Which do you prefer? Who's this? Somebody who knows what you did last night. Oh, yeah? How you know that? Well, let's just say that I have some power that the law should prohibit right now. Or ever. <laughs> Someone's trying to play God, huh? Uh, whoever this is, though, I, actually, I need you to do me one big favor, though, if you can, please. Oh, yeah? What's that? Yeah, yeah, just take your telephone, rub some Vaseline on it, and just stick it into your damn toilet hole. You got that? This is Miles, by the way. Miles Harrison. You know who I am? Yeah, with a messy accent like that, how can I forget? You should be that same preppy classmate my older brother had back in university, huh? Oh, man, like, I thought you were going to punch in my law degree in there somewhere. No? 
<laughs> Keep up with that trash talking, Curly, and I'll punch that right in your funeral. You got that? Now, seriously, though, what do you want? Listen, Eric, I know. I know everything. I know exactly what you and your brothers were fighting over as soon as your daddy died. And my boy, if only you knew half of what's going on right now, you would wish you were born in a starving refugee family in Africa. You finished? What do you want? Who, me? I'm just, I'm just trying to help. You know, you're, you got a pretty dysfunctional family, you know that? I got a question for you. Like, what kind of older brother would arrange a gun deal between you and a bunch of money-hungry bike-riding thugs? You know, if you ask me, I would say there's a price on your head. Your elder brother, Hurricane, is the one who's responsible for the price tags. Frankly, do you, do you know how much money people will make as soon as you die? Say, uh, how about we discuss this in person now? What do you think? <laughs> Hold on a second, my other line, my other line. All right, Randy, how much time do you need? Randy, how much time do you need? Just give me the word and I'm ready. All right, okay. Hello, earthquake. No, no, you listen. You picked the wrong guy, you picked the wrong day. Okay, you got that? See, I'm coming for your ass. And you better take Hurricane to hell with you too. Because I run this city. I run this. Okay, Randy, take the shot. Job's done, let's go. I was hoping I would have a chance to pick you up this morning before you saw this morning's paper. What the hell is this? This is just a test. Mr. Harris had said it himself. It's not normal for someone to have a change of heart all of a sudden. You could be working for the cops for all I care. Get Miles on the phone. I can't do that. He's officially offline at the moment. Get Miles on the phone. No! Tell me where the real target is. 1487 Queen Street. I can take you there right now. You know what to do. What's going on here? It's your brother's body. Yeah, I know that's my brother. What's he doing in my house, though? He's been killed again. <laughs> Took a bullet for you, buddy. Hmm. I believe there's still some righteous people in this city. Vaccinating your virus of crime. <laughs> <laughs> you like that, huh? Send me up, Horace. If you really want to know what's going on, the best thing you got to do is calm down, listen to what I'm going to say, and use common sense. You're very confused right now, but I'll give you a little hint. Remember when Father once told us there was another one? No. Why? Well, there is another one. Eric, we're not alone in this war. Hey, Earthquake, you want some kind of police protection or something? <laughs> uh, this is what we do, right? Serve and protect? <laughs> nice. Hurricane and I who put the body there to protect you. Never say that I never look out for you, kid. If you want to meet the man who killed your brother, I suggest you head to your office right now. He's on his way there. How about you go over there and give him a tour? Hmm?
Be the best man to win. Stop. Turn around real slow, partner. Real slow, that's it. No sudden moves. Do you want him alive? Nope. Earthquake. It's you again. Now, what you got against the Hardys anyway? Once you answer the damn question, fool, you ain't gonna kill them all. Now get that gun out of my face. Yeah. Fool, I ain't got time with this. Where is Earthquake? So I'll pop one in you right now, goddammit. Earthquake ain't around here. Get that gun out of my face. Wrong family. you'd be a little bit older. You know the best thing about killing my twin brother? It only made me stronger. What are you waiting for, Earthquake? Shoot him. I want my knife.
somewhere, Eric? Randy Love, huh? Yeah. You're my father's bodyguard, huh? Man, don't act like you know me. You see, you haven't spoken to the man in five years. And better still, he never told me about you. You see, it's his hatred for you that you see in my eyes right now. <sighs> you know, even though he's dead, I believe the old man still paying me to finish you off because of what you are. You see, too many good things happen to bad people like you. <laughs> and I'm here to turn things around. <laughs> Something funny? You wanna share the joke before you die? <laughs> you confused little prick. You don't have a single clue of what you're doing, huh? You're just as evil as I am, and one day you're gonna get yours, period. <laughs> See, my father, he once had a dream for me and my brothers. He was different back then. The side of him you never knew. He trained us, raised us to be just like him to be the invisible rulers of the city. And with each of us managing the three branches of the good old man's empire, sex, violence, and drugs, see, people desire it, and we acquire it. And then he saw his death coming when he got cancer. And something told him to turn his life around. So he quit. <laughs> what a loser, huh? Then you came in, 30-year-old Christian, no wife, no kids, buried between the barriers of guilt and innocence. 
and you became the good son he wished he molded a long time ago. I can see you chose one of the two options, Randy. One, destroy his past by killing the evil children that he made, or two. Look, it's your time already. Why don't you shut up and die? <laughs> See you at the family reunion. In hell, bro. Now you listen to me very carefully. The bully pulled with Johnny earlier, I'll take that as an insult. But you do that again, I'll give you a test of my own. You understand me? You dealt with the cops? The press? So you're gonna get me out of here or what? Where's my money? the same story that keeps repeating itself since high school. People like you aren't intelligent enough to understand. Look, who was the one that was got you into a fight after class? Hmm? And who was that same guy that laughed at you when he got beat up by the big guys? See, let me tell you a little story here. Now, when I was in college, right, I met this guy. I became friends with this guy by the name of Horace Henri Hardensky. Hardensky. I became close with this guy, like I said, and um, there was a time he told me about this problem that he had. There were some twins in his family that would get it in the way of his hustle. Now, murder is a very difficult thing to get away with, so how does he get rid of these guys? Well, that's where I come in. Well, being the good friend that I am, good business partner that I am, I knew this guy that I was sure could crush them. Just like that. My former bodyguard. Now, you know what I'm capable of. You know that I got some power in the press. The citizens that'll be reading the newspaper tomorrow, they won't have any idea that Hurricane or myself have anything to do with the murders. Oh no, absolutely not. But they will, they will ask themselves this question. They will wonder, why would this murderer do something like that? Why would he kill these guys, huh? He was the bodyguard for their father, who assigned him as the contingent owner and beneficiary of the life insurance policy, which would qualify him for an automatic $3 million fund on the deathbed. Ah! Oh. It all makes sense, doesn't it? I am seriously, seriously getting tired of listening to you talk. Do you want to know where the money is? I'll tell you where. It's in a safe, cash. Hurricane had it the whole time. There is no life insurance policy. I'm sorry, but it was a fraud. It was just motivation for you. And those lawyers you're talking to, not lawyers. Do it for a Hurricane or myself. People are trying to make some money here, yo. Dollar, dollar bills, yo. Hurricane is now in control of the entire holiday finances, and I got a wedding and honeymoon to look forward to, and you, you got what? See, that's why I chose you, you're disposable. You don't know who you are, what you are, so people are always gonna take advantage of you and decide for you. 
It's the toughest road, man. You should know that. I'm sorry, Randy. I'm really sorry. Well, I best be going now. And uh, you know what I'm gonna say, right? Don't drop the soap. Keep your butthole tight. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Randy. I still can't believe it was you all along. This isn't you. You're not a killer. And how am I a killer, George? I just took out the two biggest crime lords, and you want to point the fingers at me? Judge me? You know what? Screw Miles. Screw the police. Screw you. <laughs> right. Is that really why you did it? To punish the wicked? Take law into your own hands? You know, for years I've been played the fool. But now, but now, I'm gonna get rewarded for the good things that I do. Temporarily. Never be jealous when good things come to bad people. You don't know what's coming to them. All I know, George, the old man promised me $3 million. The money's mine and I'm gonna get it. So I'm not going to jail. <sighs> I'm afraid you are. I just called Jamaica. Your mother's dead. La vie est belle. La mort se trouve au fond de l'horizon. Le ciel, la mer, les arbres, l'oxygène. La beauté de cette vie se trouve dans les détails de la nature. Dans tous les éléments que l'on remarque avec nos yeux nus, la beauté ne cesse jamais d'avoir la victoire contre les obstacles de ce monde. Depuis des siècles et des siècles, l'espoir, l'amitié et l'amour a grandi avec l'aide d'un élément pur et naturel qu'on y trouve dans les champs, ainsi que dans le cœur de la nature. Comme on dit en anglais, « What you're looking for is always right under your nose. » Le sucre. Dans n'importe quel endroit qu'on recherche l'espoir, l'amour, le bonheur, c'est dans ce petit sachet de plastique qu'on y trouve la bonne santé mentale et psychologique. Selon les citoyens de haute classe, ce sont ces petites étoiles blanches qu'on avale à tous les jours. Les étoiles blanches qu'on respire à tous les heures. The way it works in this system, when leading members of your herd get eaten up, you join another herd that is higher ranked in the food chain. You guys are going to be working for us now. Any objections? Didn't think so. What's with all this silence? A lot of people dying these days, isn't that right, Mr. Harrison? Yeah, well... Some people actually do the homework when they get it. And where's Hurricane? Did you get rid of him? What? Is he dead? Uh, no, he's, um, he's going to jail. Locked up. Why? You know, I don't think that's going to be good enough. No, that's not going to be good enough, Miles. I want to get my hands on this guy myself. And Volcano wasn't even my real brother. Who makes you think Hurricane doesn't want to kill him to begin with? I'm afraid you still have some work to do, my friend. One more person needs to die. My boss had to make personal sacrifices in order to achieve greatness. Maybe you're reluctant to have that bodyguard dead because he's your own cousin. Is that why, Miles? Hmm? Is that why you had him put to jail instead? Listen. I don't need to answer to you, you, or you. If you guys think for one second that you can make personal demands, then you can see about it with Johnny outside. Then where's Hurricane? He's upstairs. Souvent, je me demande si vraiment je suis le fils du démon. Chaque matin, je me regarde dans le miroir avec un sourire, comme c'était causé par la beauté de la nature. 
Mais Dieu sait que j'ai presque les mêmes intentions que l'ennemi à l'enfer. Quel genre de prince n'a pas peur d'éliminer ses propres frères juste pour devenir roi? Mais écoute, Horace, il fait tout ce que tu m'as dit de faire, non? Toute la richesse des entreprises de ta famille t'appartient maintenant. Tu es le seul qui reste. <rire> tu l'as bien dit. Je suis le seul maintenant. <rire> il y a du mal qui se cache dans chaque plaisir. I run the city. Nice strategy you had there. Very convincing. Thank you very much. On a gagné, Horace. On a gagné. One more thing. What if he escapes? He's not going to escape. The man arrested for murdering the twin sons of John Hardy has escaped this morning from city police custody. Randy Love was arrested yesterday by Chief Police Inspector George Wintley and was sent to city police headquarters just about an hour after shooting Eric Earthquake Hardy to death. And just about 12 hours ago, a security camera caught the murderer physically assaulting his lawyer in an interrogation room. Randy Love, 30, is the former bodyguard of the deceased humanitarian John Hardy. Knew it. Just knew it. That bastard Harrison's playing you like a Nintendo. I told you he couldn't be trusted. You know what's funny? I wanted this power all my life. I want to be number one in my family. Somehow, I feel like this man has taken it all. He scares me. I want to meet this guy. I'm not the last one left. I don't think he's the only one you should worry about. Apparently, we only managed to buy off 75% of the local police force. One squad remains rebellious. It's the cops. It's GW. He's here. What do you want to do, Hurricane? Hurricane? What do you want to do? Let's go say hi. Well, well, what do we got here? You guys want some coffee? Anything? You knew this was coming, kid. I'm taking you and your people to the slammer. No more games. It's over. I see. Mr. Anderson? Yes. How you doing? I've been better, but, you know. Friends of yours? Not exactly. They dropped in when I was here waiting for you. Right, Johnny? Yeah, whatever. You know, George, I'm really impressed. I wonder how you managed to pass through all my security. I've been on to you for a bit, Hurricane. We are security. Listen, I my courage. I always liked you, really. But I'm just one step closer to establishing an empire larger than my father's. If you cross my path on this day, I swear to God you will wish you retired last week. If John Hardy could speak from the grave, he'd want you to learn his lesson. All this money, all this power, doesn't mean anything when you're dying. And I promise you, if it was up to me, I'd make you learn that lesson the quick and the painful way. Don't test my patience, Horace. You know what to do. Miles, get out of the way! You know this is for your own good, Wintley. You know you've been doing a very good job for the past couple of weeks. But don't let us get out of control now. Miles? Yes. What is it? I haven't smiled all day. At all. You know what that means, right? A lot of people are going to die today. Yep. <sighs> okay, listen, Horace. Let me tell you something. You don't have to do this, all right? Look, just let me do my thing. I'll speak to him, I'll negotiate, I can make him go away. Look, listen, what are you gonna prove out of this, huh? Tell me. Look, you made me sacrifice a lot already, all right? You made me do things that I should go to hell for. But this right here, this right here is too much, Horace. Too much. What makes you think you can solve everything with bloodshed? Hurricane no longer has any competition in his family. You told us you could eliminate them without getting any of us in trouble with the law. We didn't know how you would do it, but you did it, Miles. You did your job. The twins, they were vicious architects of murder. 
But when we heard stories that one man, recruited by you, single-handedly took them out, both of them, this so-called competition that you were supposed to get rid of, you multiplied it. This friend of yours, the bodyguard, he's gonna be here soon, right? As long as he got legs, as long as the lousy three million dollars is here, you can bet your sugar factory he's coming for it. He's coming for you. Good, because I'm ready. We're all ready. Ready to make an example out of anyone who trespasses this property or opposes this movement. How are you, Wade Hurricane? Whoa, 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 whoa. Everybody take it easy, okay? Come on! <sighs> Horace, please. Don't do this. Mr. Harrison, there's a traitor among us. He belongs on the other side of the field, and he should be killed first. GW and his people will be next. If you really do think this can be discussed in a different nature, then we give you 45 seconds to speak some sense into the cops. That's what you do, right? That's what you do best? That's what I do. That's what I do. George, you have a daughter? You have a 12-year-old daughter, don't you? Yeah, I don't know. Have you and your daughter ever had any cereal in the morning and you realized that the sugar tasted a little sweeter than usual and you were so sure, so certain that it was going to be the beginning of a beautiful day? I don't eat hurricanes crap. My point is, my client, now owns all sugar brands now. And with his new money, he's gonna own 70% of all businesses in the city. If you don't like the way things are, why don't you just leave? Why can't you just go home? Evacuate you and your little squad away from the city as far away as possible. I won't retire. I won't even sleep until my mission has been accomplished. What are you gonna do, George? Arrest them? The whole city is gonna pounce on you for that. Think about it. Drug dealers, drug addicts, pimps, prostitutes, even businessmen and noblemen alike, politicians, everybody is gonna pounce on you. At this point of things, taking a hurricane out of the picture only means that you wanna die a cop. If you don't leave this room in the next 30 seconds, the least I can do for you is give you recognition. News reporters, politicians, your peers in the police force, your daughter. Everybody's gonna tell stories about the pain and suffering you're about to endure right here in this very room, right before you die. Your own people, your superiors, Those that are really in charge of the police force, those that didn't really want to come with you in this suicide mission, they've been bought already. They are his main customers. Save yourself while you still can. 30 years with the police. All I want to do is the right thing, but I never did.